at this point, there are two types of tests. One is meant to be diagnostic. This is where a swab's put up the nose or in the throat, and it, what's called a molecular test, an RT-PCR, is done to determine, are you right now uh, infected with the virus? Note that that doesn't work very early on in the infection. You have to wait a few days. The second type of test is a serological test. This is a test to determine after you've recovered, was this um, COVID-19? In other words, do I now have antibodies against that virus? What we don't know, and this is really important, is what level of antibody is protective and for how long? The most important thing will be up for us to figure out at what level of antibody do we think you are protected against reinfection or re-exposure. And as you might imagine, once we know that, particularly on the healthcare side, you can redeploy healthcare workers with presumably no fear of them getting infected with that virus, not needing uh, the same level of PPE and being able to care for people, even very sick people. It definitely helps us reopen on the medical side. In other words, once we know what doctors, nurses, and other healthcare workers uh, have in terms of an immunity status, we can redeploy them to see patients with a much lower level of PPE and presumably without risk. Other sectors of the, of the economy are the same thing. In fact, interestingly enough, people have been talking about, do we issue an immunity card or passport mm. so that if you're a school teacher and you have immunity, you can go back to teaching school. If you're a school kid, you can go back to school. And you can imagine that for every sector of the economy in the private business sector. People who are immune could go back to work and you just keep broadening that out. I think uh, the prudent thing to do would be to contact your physician and determine what uh, assays do they have available to them in the healthcare setting that they're in.